Good morning. With all the sniffling and coughing, I'm in the right place. Because I've, I've got one going on too, so you pray for me. Um, I do have a backup. If I run into trouble, Ricky Owens is going to come up here. And I tell you what, I believe Ricky can do her too. Amen? And we are glad that you are here. And what better place to be on the last Sunday of 2018 in church? But even better, what better place to be the first Sunday of the new year? Amen? So you need to be back the first Sunday of the new year, and you need to take a look around and uh, observe those who have not been here for quite some time so that we can all as a congregation kick the new year off right, be back here in God's house. But we are glad that you're here this morning. If you want to take a look at your announcements there, a lot of things going on once again. No uh, missions meeting in January. We've got ice skating night there. And just look at the dates for yourself. Helping hands meeting January the 8th. The Oaks Luncheon is coming up on January the 10th, so those of you who will participate in that and those that would like to, uh, be mindful of those dates there as well. We've got a Super Soup Sunday coming up under sign-up sheets out in the entryway, entryway for that be coming up uh, in the various meetings. Uh, we've got, let's see, the Restoration Leadership Summit guys coming up January the 26th, and we'll have some more information on that uh, as that approaches to see. And that's for women nowadays, too. Men and women both go to that, so if you have an interest there, you're, you're more than welcome. So there's a, a lot of things taking place there, so make sure you get a bulletin if you hadn't had a chance to. Also, I've got a card I'd like to read here from David Greathouse. His brothers and sisters in Christ, because of you there's someone who is thanking God today, someone who appreciates your warm and caring way, someone who's remembering the special things you do and wishing you His blessings every day the whole year through. Thank you so much for your prayers and concerns uh, during my recent illness. I love you all, David Greathouse. So continue to remember David uh, in your prayer. And you'll notice our prayer concern list uh, in your bulletin. We have a number of, of individuals that we need to continue uh, to remember in our prayers there as well. Uh, keep Greg and his family in your prayers as they head out on vacation tomorrow. Is that right, Greg? <laughs> and uh, for their uh, Tuesday? Okay. And uh, I want you, if you would, uh, Kevin Gibbs this past year has led and worked hard on our ministry team. And as some of you know, he's going to be stepping aside. He'll still be, be here on Sundays, seeing where he can and, and playing. But as far as the structure of it, uh, he's got a lot going on. But would you show the young man your appreciation for the year and hard work that he's put in there? Appreciate that. Thank you, Kevin, a lot. So. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Psalm 37, and it'll be up on the PowerPoint here in just a moment. I've entitled message, When Wrong Seems Strong. When Wrong Seems Strong. I'm not going to look at all 40 verses there of Psalm 37, but I do want to take a look at the first nine verses and what David has to share with us concerning the new year. I, uh, you know, Lenny mentioned some things about the new year. I'm kind of excited about the new year. Anybody excited about 2019 coming in? Yeah. Is anybody, has anybody been ready for 2018 to exit as quick as possible? Oh, the lot of hands, you know, for a lot of reasons. You know, I'm excited about 2019, but also I'm a little bit saddened too. You see, I'm excited because I'm looking forward to what God has in store for my life and for this congregation the coming year, for all of the kingdom opportunities that He might afford to us. I'm also looking forward because since I belong to Him, since you and I belong to Him, I have no doubt in my mind that as I have been blessed throughout the year of 2018, God will bless us throughout the year 2019. Amen? Every day, whether we acknowledge it or not, God continues to bless our lives. Amen, church? And we must never take those blessings for granted. So I have no doubt in my mind, whether we are in the valley of life or on the mountaintop, that each day God will bless our lives. And that excites me as well. I'm saddened because the reality hits, because we live in a fallen world. And it seems, it would seem silly for us to think about 2019 being totally new and totally different from 2018 because it just will not happen because of the fallen world that we live in. And I'm sad because I know in my heart of hearts that there will be many people who will be confronted with struggles 
disappointments, pain, loss, death, all of those things that people experienced throughout 2018 will revisit people in the new year. Maybe you and I, maybe some of the ones who are here will experience the health issues, the loss, the, the deaths in our families. God above only knows. But we know because of the evilness and how consistent it is in the fallen world that we live in, that it will just repeat itself in various forms and fashions throughout the brand new year. But we have an amazing God. Amen. Even though things may change, even though we may be ushering a brand new year, the Bible says that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. While we live in consist consistently changing times, God does not change. As He was with us in the past, He will be with us in the present and also in the future, regardless of what we are facing throughout the new year. I'm excited for a lot of reasons, but I'm saddened as well, too. And I'm sure you probably are as, as well. But I tell you what, and I truly agree, and I've said this before, the older you get, the quicker time goes by. Amen, church? It just seems to fly, fly by. Concerning the world that we live in, the fallen world that we live in, and I don't have this in your bulletin. If you want to write this down in your outline, Jesus himself said in John 16, 33, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. We may live in a fallen world, but we serve a risen Savior. Amen? We may live in a fallen world, but we serve a risen Savior, one who has promised to be with us in the present and in the future. Every step of the way, regardless of what we may face in life, He has promised to be there. In the world that we live in, these things take place. There is injustice everywhere. Mother Nature continues to affect the lives of the innocent. Disease and sickness affect the godly and the godless as well. But in the midst of all of that, John 14, verse 1, Jesus said, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust. And I want to talk about trust. And I want to talk about some of the other characteristics that David brings to our attention in those very few verses. If we are to face that new year, and I think Lenny said it in that communion meditation, there is no way in the world that we will be able to face the situations that we will be faced with, that others will be faced with, apart from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? I do not know how people who have yet to receive Jesus Christ come through some of the tragedies that they come through. You know, it's wonderful to have family and friends around to bring us through situations that help the healing, but there's only one that can bring that deep-seated healing that we all need during those times, and that is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? And so many people are in the world and do not have Him as their Lord and Savior, and therefore do not receive that, that, that inward healing that they need to have bestowed upon their lives. That's what we have that they do not have. So don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Psalm 37, even David says, do not fret, which basically means the same thing. Don't be worried. Don't be anxious. Don't be distressed. Now you'll notice in here, he contrasts the righteousness and the evil throughout those verses there. Now I'm just going to touch base a little bit on the evil that men do, but I want to talk about some of the other injustices that take place in the world. The things that take place not only as a result of the fall of man, but when man fell, the world <laughs> took a nosedive as well. Isn't that right? You've, you've noticed the, the latest tsunami and the fires and the hurricanes and all of these things, volcanoes erupting, all of those things as a result of the fall of man. And they affect us. They affect people everywhere, as I just mentioned a moment ago. How are we to, how are we to combat that? How are we to go on with our lives when we ourselves are dealing with some of these injustices? How are we to deal with the news that we've got cancer? How are we to deal with, with loss of, of job, where financial is a struggle, where family member has died? How are we to move on? Now, or even through the new year, as I said, it's impossible without a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But in these verses, these few verses David shares with us, not only does he deal with the evilness of men, but in my mind's eye, he's telling us how to persevere when all of life seems to be coming against us. 
where we are able to persevere and stand tall in the power and the strength of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because as His Word says, we can do all things. Amen? We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And church, we need His strength now more than ever. Would you take a look at these verses with me here? Psalm 37, let's take a look at the first nine verses. David writes, Do not fret because of evil men, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like grass they will soon wither, like green plants they will die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It only leads to evil. It leads only to evil. For evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. When wrong seems strong. Let me ask you something. Does wrong seem strong in our society and world today? Amen. It does. Wrong seems off so strong. But God is still the ruler. God is still in charge, regardless of what we see taking place in the world. When wrong seems strong, if you're following along on your outline, this is what David reveals to us, that we might continue to persevere when wrong seems strong. First he says, when wrong seems strong, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pastor. Whether it's the evil that men do or the injustice of the fallen world, trust. How vital is trust in any and every relationship that you and I are part of? Trust, I believe, is the most important characteristic in any relationship, whether it's marriage, between husband and wife, whether it's in that, that parent-child relationship, trust is very important within the body of Christ, and trust is very important in our relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Think about it this way, when a patient has confidence in his or her doctor, there's a willingness to take the prescribed medicines and to follow the course of treatment, course of action. See, when that trust is there in the patient, when they trust the doctor, they believe they're going to get better as long as they follow the doctor's instruction. Isn't that right? And that's kind of like our relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When we are obedient, when we trust and are obey, obedient, to His call, to His will upon our lives. Our lives will be blessed as we trust in the Lord with all our heart. And as David says, continue to do good. Greg's talked a lot in the past weeks, especially through Titus, about the importance of doing good. Of doing good, the works that God has called us to do. But I believe if our hearts are in the right place and we continue to do good, we will enjoy the safe pasture that David is talking about. For God's provision and protection will not fail us. In many of our lives that has been proved time and time again. 20th century teacher and preacher Oswald Chambers once said, Faith never knows where it's being led, but it loves and knows the one who is leading. Isn't that true? Let me, let me share that again. Faith never knows where it's being led, but it loves and knows the one who is leading. I love the hymn, Many Things About Tomorrow. I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Amen. Many things about tomorrow. Many things about the new year. We don't understand. We have no foreknowledge of. But because we have a relationship, because we trust in our Lord and Savior, because we trust and love our Heavenly Father who loves us and who has placed our hands in His, we have not need to fear what tomorrow holds because He does. How many of you ever, ever thought how nice it would be to be able to look into the future? Let's be honest. How many of you thought, I mean, it would be nice to see what? It's kind of a scary thought too, isn't it, Greg, to be able? Because we probably wouldn't like some things that, we, that were revealed to us as well. But God sees all of our tomorrows before they're even a thought on our minds. And He will lead us and bring us through our tomorrows. When wrong seems strong, trust. Trust is so vital. The second thing David brings to us, when wrong seems strong, delight yourself 
in the Lord. Look what he says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So I have a question. What is your heart's desire for the new year? Over in Philippians chapter 3, Paul had a change of heart and now his heart was set on being like Christ, wasn't it? He was setting aside the past. Whenever he was Saul, he was setting aside his past. Even when he became Paul and all his past accomplishments, he has one goal, and that is to become more like Christ. What is your heart's desire? Is it to be more like Jesus Christ through the coming year? You know, Mike has shared with us several occasions during our prayers and stuff, a genuine prayer that God would make him the man that he desires to be. And I believe that he is. But that's a prayer that we all need to pray. Lord, help me to be the man, the woman, the young person that you desire me to be. Help my heart's desire to be what your word and what your will has and intends for my life. What are the desires of your heart? What does it mean to delight in someone? It says, delight yourself in the Lord. To delight oneself is to find great joy and satisfaction in someone or something. Hold your place there. And let's go back over to Psalm chapter 1. The first psalm, if you would. The very first psalm. Psalm, <clears throat> psalm 1. Notice what it says here. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight, his joy, his satisfaction is in the law or the Word of God. And on his law, upon God's Word, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers, but not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish." But his delight, his joy, his satisfaction is in the Word of God. I love that psalm. I hope and pray our joy, our satisfaction, our desire is in getting to know the Lord more. Delighting ourselves in the Lord and in His Word precedes or goes before God giving us the desires of our hearts. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you as well. In order to experience this type of joy and satisfaction that we desire, we've got to invest ourselves in the relationship. Gene and Max, keep Max in your prayers, amen? He's still at the VA. As we've mentioned, and many of you participated, 75 years. You do not celebrate a 75th wedding anniversary if you've not invested in one another's lives. Amen? If you have not invested in one another's life. If you have not taken, in, taken delight in one another, 75 years would never have come about. But those 75 years came about because they found delight in one another. Great joy and satisfaction in that realm of marriage and the life they've shared together. But in order to experience that, you've got to invest your life in that relationship. The more time you spend with a person, the more you get to know that person. Let me give you an example here. You know, Ricky and I, we love to fish together and it seems like we're always together. I can't remember the lady's name, but for the past two times that I have met her, she has called me Ricky. I don't know how to take that. But anyway, no, we, you know, are we starting to look alike? I don't know. But anyway, but because we spend quite a bit of time together, we get to know one another. And that's how those relationships build. And the more time you spend together, the more times you know that person, and you begin to delight and take joy and satisfaction in that relationship. And that's God's intention for us. How do we do that? What we're doing right now through fellowship, through prayer, through the study of God's Word. We invest ourselves in that relationship in order to be able to know Him better, what His Word says and what His will is for our lives. I truly believe, church, if we want for ourselves what God wants most for us, He will give us our heart's desires. He will give us our heart's desires. When wrong seems strong, delight yourself in the Lord. The third thing David brings to mind, when wrong seems strong, commit your way 
to the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him and He will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. To commit to someone or to something is to totally entrust yourself. To commit ourselves to our Heavenly Father and to a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is to give our all. Not only self, but he says that when we commit, we are not only committing ourselves, but we are committing our family. We are committing our finances. We are committing our materials, our wealth to his care. And I have a question for you. Who better to care for us than the one who created us? Who better to care for us than the one who created us? But to commit ourselves, we are to commit ourselves in all ways to the one who created us. All to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. You remember singing that song? I wonder how many people sang that song and yet today have never truly surrendered all. They're holding back something in their life that for whatever the reason they're getting thrills out of and they've not given it over to Jesus Christ. He wants our all, amen church? To invest our all, to entrust our all to Him and to His care. He loves us and He wants the best for us. You know, when our hearts are heavy from worry and the cares of life, we've got to commit our way to the Lord. You know, we've got a lot of people in this congregation that are going through some pretty heavy stuff right now. Cancer and sickness and falls and just a, an age, a number of things that are pressing upon the heart that we need to be in prayer for. God sees, God knows, God understands. And God will bring those individuals through. I love 1 Peter 5.7. It says, cast all of your cares on Him because He cares for you. I guess I like that for one reason. That word cast is a fishing term, which means to throw off. Which means to throw off. And what he's saying here is throw off your cares. Throw off your worries and your concerns. And if you're throwing them off, you've got to have some place to place them. And Jesus says, place them on my shoulders. Place them on my shoulders. I got a kick out of this. There's a church that had a sign in its foyer that read, Do not feel totally, personally, irrevocably responsible for everything. That's my job. Sign God. Amen. And sometimes we try to take too much on ourselves. And God says, back off. I'm here. I love you. Place it upon me. Place it upon me. And last but not least, when wrong seems strong, wait patiently for the Lord. Verse 7 and 8. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil, for evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. How many of you have ever taken the situation in your own hands and regret it to this day? A lot of us have. Sometimes you can get by with that and things work out. I don't know about you, the, the times that I have intervened in something God should have taken care of, I mess things up worse royally. I don't know about you. you know, I, I, I don't know what your thoughts are. It, 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 it is heart wrenching whenever we see, seemingly see the wicked prosper. When we see faithful men and women of God who are struggling, who are doing without. I mean, life's not fair. The Lord never meant that life would be fair. But you know, when it comes to the end, when it comes to the final call, and, and Jesus Christ comes back, all of man's wealth won't get him into heaven. All of his past accomplishments, all that he's ever done, it's only a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we are not to envy those. And even in the midst of all the atrocities of life because of the fallen world, when those things bring us down too, take heart, trust, commit yourself. Because it will pass. It will, be, it will pass. You know, I don't know what the new year has for me physically or any other way. And I've said this before, but a lot of people are struggling, dealing with, with cancer and different types of sicknesses. And, and we pray for them that God's will be done, that they be healed of these things. And sometimes they are totally healed and sometimes they are not. But if you are a born again believer in Jesus Christ, when you cross over to the other side, you will be brand new. 
There will be no more sickness, no more cancer, no more of anything that we've ever dealt with on this side of life. Whether we are delivered on this side or that side, deliverance comes. Amen? Amen. Deliverance will come. But we've got to hang in there and trust and commit ourselves to the one who has done that for us and for our lives. You know, this waiting patiently can be difficult for those who have a type A personality. I don't know if you're that way, if you know somebody, and I know you've heard this before. They are the type of people who pray this way. Lord, give me patience and do it now. Isn't that right? Those are the type A personality. You know, you think about that. The Apostle Paul is a great example of one who learned to be content and to trust. Would you turn to Philippians just for a moment, please? Philippians 4, 10 through 13. Philippians 4, 10 through 13. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have, uh, have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. Now, I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. He learned how to persevere regardless of what the situation was. A believer was asked for her favorite Bible verse, and she simply said, and it came to pass. And I don't know about you, but that's something to take comfort in, because eventually everything will either get better or pass when the Lord comes back. And that can be encouraging to each and every one of us. You know, isn't it so hard, church? Whenever we turn on the TV or we've got the radio, I don't know how many of you, you know, get the newspaper, everybody's looking at news on their phones. But it's disheartening when we see people being mistreated. I don't care who they are and where they come from. They're being mistreated, they're suffering, they're having difficulties. But God will make it right one day. God will make it right one day. There's an old hymn entitled, He Cares for His Own. And a portion of that says this, God never yet forsook at need the soul that trusted Him indeed. And I believe that, don't you? I believe that with all my heart. Kevin, would you and the rest of the praise team go ahead and come forward? I shared a verse from you. Maybe you've written it down. John 16, 33. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble. I wish I could, I, I wish I could say to you that when 2019 rolls in, you'll never experience sickness or want or, or, or concern or any of those things that all wrongs will be made right but those things are only going to happen when Jesus Christ comes back and then again it's not going to be here he's got something new for us but we will usher in 2019 dragging in a lot of old junk <laughs> but because of who we are in Christ we can persevere amen church we can persevere. We can be the change that we need to see in our community and in our world as well. You know the disciples, these words that Jesus shared in John 16, 33. But I have come, but I have overcome the world, brought great comfort to the disciples. Because it assured them that every difficult situation that they were going to be faced with, that they were not going to go through it alone. And that promise is just as much for you and I as it was for them today. I don't care what you're going through right now. The Father knows, and you're not going through it alone. It may seem that way at times, but take heart. Continue to trust. Commit yourself, because He is right there, right there with you. I want to bring my message to a close this morning by sharing with you a true story that happened, I don't know how many years ago. A family lost three children to diphtheria in the same week. Only their three-year-old girl escaped the disease. The following Sunday was Easter, and the mother and the father and the child were all in church because the father was a Sunday school superintendent. And he led the opening session when all the classes met together. You remember that? We all met together and sang songs and stuff before we went to classes. And as he read the Easter message from the Bible, many people were crying, but he and his wife remained calm and serene. A young man who was riding home with his father after the service said, The superintendent and his wife must really believe the Easter message. And his father answered, All Christians do. And the young man replied, Not the way they do. So I'm going to ask you a question. 
where you're at in your life this morning, the situations that life has presented you. Have you given in or given up or have you given it over to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Are you trusting? Are you delighting? Are you committing all your ways? Are you waiting patiently for the Lord? If there's one here this morning and you are in Christ and you're dealing with all sorts of things, continue to trust in the one who gave his all for you. He'll bring you through. If you're here this morning and you're not a believer, you're not a born again believer, you're not going to make it on your own. It's no way you're going to make it on your own. You've got to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. The storms will still come. The one who calms the storm has promised to bring you through the storm, to bring you to the other side. Amen, church? He's here with us. As he was in this present year, he will be with us throughout the new year. And if ever there was a time to give your life and your heart to Jesus Christ, what better way to begin the new year? By beginning and being a brand new person, the old gone. Behold, the new has come. What better way? Wherever you find yourself at in life right now, make that decision. Make that decision as we stand and as we sing our invitation to him.